Greenings! Welcome to Be Green with Amy. I'm Amy. My husband Rick and I adopted a whole plant lifestyle in 2012 and we have had fantastic prescription-free health results and maintained our weight loss. And I love to interview others who live this lifestyle or have knowledge and tips for us. So post your questions below and I'll read them to our guests later in the broadcast. Now, to help others who are searching for health or weight loss solutions, please share, like, comment, and subscribe to Be Green with Amy. Just task voice. Let's welcome our guest. Plant-based since the year 2000, Mike Young used his passion to form the nonprofit of PlantBasedDiet.org. He is an advocate of a veganic plant oh. lifestyle and anything that leads people in that direction. Be Green with Amy welcomes Mike Young. Greetings, Mike. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Oh, I am so glad you're here. You are so busy uh, advocating for this lifestyle. Just get you pinned down in one place where I can talk to you. It's just a great, great feeling. And I'm really so glad that you're here. Now, you have done so many things. And one of the great things is that you've taken your passion for the vegan lifestyle and have made a not profit organization. And there's so many other things that you do, but I don't want to spend our time talking about it. So I'm just going to put it in our uh, comments below. I'm going to talk about all the things that you do and the links to the things that you do. And I want you to talk more about it, I guess. So but let's introduce you to the people that may not know you or they may know of you and not have met you because you're sometimes behind the scenes. How did you get started with this lifestyle? All right. Well, to give you the shortest version, I'd say I was always a, a picky eater when I was younger. And it turns out over the years that the things that I didn't want to eat were the things that were not are not were and are not good for you. So I made some good choices till I uh, till I turned about 30. And that was 21 years ago. So I'm 51 years old. And when I turned 30, I was given a diagnosis of of uh, high cholesterol and the doctor told me that if we didn't bring the, if we didn't bring that number down he's going to put me on meds so i started researching on the on the internet and just started you know improving my health even more because i was already a pretty pretty healthy person people would tell me that but i still had high cholesterol so i learned about the role of animal products high fat diets etc and i was able to reverse all of that and just kept getting more and more knowledge and i'd say it wasn't until uh you know I turned vegan that I realized I didn't know anyone else that was in this lifestyle. And that's when we started the nonprofit in 2014 and uh, started local communities so people can connect and events, all kinds of stuff, all kinds of fun stuff, hopefully. Wow. That's a really great story. We, we get to meet all kinds of people on our broadcast here and some of them have been doing it for life and only for a year and so forth. And people have different reasons and, and yours was a little bit different from others. And it's just so interesting that you found this lifestyle and made it work for you. But we're going to talk maybe a little bit about vegan and then maybe the healthier version of vegan. So do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yes, absolutely. I'm sure you already know that there is not, uh, they're not necessarily the same thing. And if you look behind me over here at this, um, it says healthy vegan food underneath the certification. That's kind of what we want to point people. We first want to get folks to get off of animal products because once they get off of animal products, they, their health typically improves. And, you know, then learn even more. There's always more to learn. And that's why we consider ourselves an educational nonprofit. And, you know, we, we are a completely vegan organization, meaning we don't deal with any animal products. We don't uh, really discuss them at all other than that they're not a good thing. And, you know, once folks get off, they're, they're fairly open-minded, I'd say, and then we can hopefully continue to educate because, as we both know, the human health part of it is a lot more specific. And we want restaurants to get involved. We want food manufacturers, people that sell food, and, of course, just consumers to, to have the knowledge to make better choices or make the best choices for their health. Right. It's so, it's so confusing, though, because I run across people who talk about vegan and then they talk about plant-based and 
they, they, they look at things and labels in the store and they say, well, this must be healthy, it's vegan. And it's just such a confusing thing for even for people that are learning about the plant-based lifestyle, they still get pretty overwhelmed. So it's really nice that uh, you have something that would be definitely uh, helpful with this lifestyle and, and learning about it. So, I mean, I mean, one of the things I think that you address is oil, right? And yes. that oil may not necessarily be a healthy option. Can you talk about that? Absolutely. Well, if you look at this, the, the logo again behind me, the certified, you can't see underneath, but we have a trademark on healthy vegan food. We want, I think those are the three simplest words that we can describe what we're trying to do here so that no one has to take a deep dive into the science or the evidence. However, from, from the science and evidence standpoint, basically what makes this healthy vegan food, the certified healthy vegan food different is that there are a few things, like you said, it's got to contain no oil and nothing with oil. It's got to have plant fiber in it because a lot of the vegan foods out there today don't even have plant fiber in them. Most of them do have oil. And that's unfortunate from a, from a human health standpoint. And in addition to that, it's got to have zero alcohol and no added salt. That's the other thing that uh, is a big factor. We don't say to restaurants and things that they can't have salt shakers there for folks because they can always add it later. But as you probably know, Amy, if you add it when you're cooking, you're going to add a lot more and you're probably going to add, add even more later after it's cooked and you're just going to get way too much. So it's best to just salt it right before you eat it. Well, I'm really glad. I knew that your certification was no oil. I didn't know that it was also no salt. So I'm really impressed with that yeah. because most chefs are traditionally uh, trained to cook with oil. And definitely, even if you could probably talk to them about cooking without oil, I don't know how you could convince them to cook without salt. So that's very, very impressive yes well we you probably are remembering even just as long as six months ago our standard was only that it just needed to have no added oil and no animal products all right and then we added these other things meaning plant fiber no added salt and no alcohol to the mix because we found that more vegan products are, are coming out there more vegan foods more plant-based foods and the more prolific these foods become the more i realized that there were many many foods that or we as an organization realized that there were many foods that were being, that could meet our certification that we really didn't feel good about, you know, putting our stamp of approval on. So that's why we strengthened this about six months ago. And we offer it to folks too. Any, any restaurant, any food producer can get our certification. Actually, if they go to healthyveganfood.info, they can go straight to where we, we talk about this. And we even have Dr. Esselstyn's videos about uh, oil, that, like you mentioned how oil is not good. But all of this is also on our website, a plant-based diet.org. It's just on a tab on the website, but healthyveganfood.info takes you straight there. Well, that's, that's great because a lot of people really need to know this. Some people will say, oh, well, I tried that vegan lifestyle and I gained 10 pounds. Yeah. Well... <laughs> What they didn't know was that just because it's vegan doesn't mean it's healthy. And as a lot of people say, Oreo cookies are vegan. So, and, yeah. and now that- <laughs> Oreo cookies are not gonna meet our definition for healthy vegan food. <laughs> right, and they probably have salt in them too. Yeah, it's and, probably a little of everything. And I don't even know if there's any plant fiber in there. Mm. So that's really interesting. Plant fiber, all these uh, different benchmarks that uh, people would have to, Ad, uh, adhere to in order to get this certification. I am so excited about that to become more and more mainstream because when I'm traveling and out and about, it, it yeah. would really be very nice to see even the, the old certification just without the oil. But now with this new one, this is going to be a, a real game changer for a lot of us who are in this. Uh, obviously, a lot of us are, are concerned about the, the animals and a lot of us are concerned about the environment. Mm -hmm. And some people come into this lifestyle for different reasons. And some have come into it first as uh, something to improve their health. And then later on, they learn about the other reasons why it's also a good idea. So this is just something that's going to be so helpful to people. Yeah, we hope so. And I also want to mention that this is not free for everyone, actually. The restaurants, we have a small annual charge, nominal, $25 a year. 
However, we allow them free access to our local social media, and we can talk about that uh, soon. And also, they have special benefits at our events. So $25 is nothing for the, the kind of marketing they're going to get out of this. However, if you are a farmer or if you are someone that sells produce like a grocery store or, or a farm stand or something like that, it's no cost ever because we know that those are food as grown and they're always going to qualify. So, you know, I'm sure you know that too, Amy. And that's what we really want people to eat. Like minimally, minimally processed food as grown is best for, for humans. Right. And those terms can be somewhat confusing to people when they hear about processed food and what it, and minimally processed. And, and there's so many other uh, saturated fat, uh, not saturated fat and uh, whole grain. There's, there's just so many different terms that, that can be very confusing for people. So yeah. to have a, have a certification like that where they wouldn't have to worry about reading a nutrition label or exactly. something they could just that's, know. That's exactly it. two points that you just brought up just, just there and uh, the, the time before when you mentioned something about traveling and going to different restaurants. I've been through all that myself and I totally understand that's what's really pushed me along to, to strengthen this and to make it more widely available and to provide more benefits. And I, we also agree with what you're saying where we try to simplify. We try to work with the restaurants and food providers so that they get at least one dish. And you know, for, the, for them signing up, they can have one dish or they can have the whole menu full of food if they want. You know, Unfortunately, there's only one restaurant right now where their entire menu meets our certification. And uh, I'll give them a plug. That's Green Fair Organic Cafe in Herndon, Virginia. But uh, we wish every restaurant was like that, but they're not. So we're okay with just one entree or as many as they want. And from the consumer standpoint, when they go out to eat, they don't have to ask a million questions, right? When they get to the restaurant, because I'm sure you do, and I know I do, <laughs> if I want to make sure that I'm not going to get too much salt or oil in my food. So uh, this just eliminates all that and makes it a much more pleasant experience when you get to go out to eat. Right. And some people who adopt this lifestyle find that it could be socially isolating. So if they can go out to eat and even go out with their friends who may not be adopting this lifestyle and feel comfortable without having to be, like you said, be having to question the, the, the server or, or yeah. scrutinize the menu, it can be very, sometimes people are a little embarrassed about it. Yeah. And I think it seems like it's a win, win, win because the restaurant, you know, even if, like you said, most of them don't have all of their dishes, maybe they just have one dish. But now this person who's adopting this lifestyle is bringing in friends who may or may not go to this restaurant but because yeah. they're able to, because I think that's what happens, right? Yes. Is that one person in the group and the friends are like, oh, we're going to have to take <laughs> Amy out. Okay, Amy, why don't you pick the place? Hopefully it won't be all vegan and we can do something that's not. <laughs> so I hear you. this is great. Yeah, so so we just want to get the word out about this. And we I am very thankful that you got me on the show so we can talk about this. And this is only one of the things that we do, but we think it's very important. And I'll also say, just because we're always thinking way down the line for future, we will, and we're already planning on yet another standard that is much stronger than this. It's just that unfortunately, really nobody's ready for it right now. You know, <laughs> I think you know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, so- The other S. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, and more than that too. More, more and, than that. Yeah, and more. I mean, because we, we keep learning. We, uh, like I said, uh, we partner with Green Fair Organic Cafe. They are who I would consider to be the healthiest restaurant in the world in, in the D.C. suburbs. They're on they're on the cutting edge. They're Gwen, the owner. And, uh, you know, I learn from them all the time. And they're 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 just totally into this about learning what's best for humans and uh, and seeing how it works in a restaurant environment so i already have a vision for sure of where we're going with this in the future and it's just going to take some time till folks are ready and i'm i'm glad that folks are embracing plant-based foods in general right now because it's a huge huge amount of progress just since we started the organization in 2014. oh yes so tell us uh what uh else you're doing okay. besides that you wanted to talk about Yes, of course. Well, if you go to our website, plantbaseddiet.org, you can click on our, our local communities, local resources that we have. And uh, we basically, these are our communities that, that are on Facebook, they're Facebook groups, or there's some of, they're either the largest community in the local area or they are one of the larger ones. 
And basically, I will tell you, I started them for selfish reasons because I didn't know anybody in 2014 uh, that lived this lifestyle, right? That 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 refused to, to do anything with animal products. So the only way I could meet anybody at the time was to go online. Started these communities and they grew and grew. For instance, the one where closest to you, Amy, where you are in Southwest Florida right now is our largest group. And I think last count was 5,300 members in that one. And it's just a vegan group where we just don't talk about animal products. And we talk about everything else though in Southwest Florida. So, you know, we've got groups like this up and down the East coast of the United States. That is impressive. And it's, I think sometimes for people that are adopting this lifestyle, they're thinking that they're the only ones out there and to have these resources where even if they can't travel, they can just go on to your website and, and find groups, probably meet people in their area that they didn't even know existed. To. Yes, yes, of course. And unfortunately we're not everywhere, but in the areas where we have a presence that we're really actively working, we have a major presence. I, I wanna get that across to folks because, you know, if you're in the area, I would highly recommend you join, get involved in the community in these groups, because like Southwest Florida, Tampa area, Ocala area, Miami area, and Florida, we we have a, a good sized presence there. And then going up the East Coast, Savannah, uh, the the Triangle area of Raleigh, North Carolina, and then the DC area, and then also up in New Hampshire and Vermont, we have we have really good presence. We have those are like our top seven areas, I'd say, of all of them. That's wonderful. So you're really reaching reaching out across the map and who knows where where you're going to wind up. What is your what's your vision for that? Well, uh, we're, we're evolving. COVID-19 kind of threw us for a loop. I know you and I talked about this before before the live show here and it we had big plans. I'd say right before COVID shut everything down in March, our last event was Ocala Veg Fest because uh, we do Veg Fest. Let me say that for folks that are not familiar with our organization. We do veg fest in these areas. That's why we develop these communities. So we have a, an audience, an audience base, so we can have successful live events. And these are all outdoor events too. We've always done only outdoor events for festivals. And it kind of fit in well with COVID, even though we got shut down, you know, in March, uh, first weekend of March was our last event last year. And we were shut down from festival events all the way till January. And as you know, Florida opened back up, I think it was November. But we still didn't even we didn't even feel the timing was right to have our November events. We postponed those. Those are our Cape Coral Veg Fest and Naples Veg Fest, and all of these events either are or will be soon within the next few weeks on our website. If you look at tabs, you can see all these different events. We've got like five or actually I think six now because we just added Englewood in Southwest Florida. And um, it, let me just say it was challenging coming back from COVID because we had 15 annual events planned before COVID. COVID shut us down. We did three here in Florida just as an experiment because the venues wanted it. There's a lot of people that wanted it. We did it in a safe manner, socially distanced. And our, of course, we're outdoors. And as you know, Amy, we have this big video wall. We can put lots of cool videos and uh, graphics up. People can do PowerPoint presentations, including physicians outdoors, which is pretty cool. You know, we, we always thought it was cool, but it's even cooler now You know that we have COVID. And Outdoor events are now a thing, right? I mean, because nobody really wants to congregate indoors. I think, I think everybody can agree on that at this point in time. It's just not worth the risk. And who knows when that risk is really going to go away? No, we don't. And I, the other thing that I liked about your uh, festivals is that if you do have food vendors, tell us about the constraints for the food vendors. Okay. Well, of course, we are a vegan organization, so. The only food that can be served at any of our events is free from animal products. So, and that's true, not only for the food, but for any products and services, any organizations. We don't require these organizations to be vegan, completely vegan themselves, because that's just asking too much at this point in time. Although in the future, who knows? But uh, rest assured, when you show up at one of our events, it's gonna be a whole different vibe, a whole different culture, because there aren't gonna be any animal products there won't be any discussed and you know people realize it's a, a lot of fun and we can you know we can do this we don't need the animal products and i think a lot of times when people go to these events they become energized themselves afterwards they've met all these new people and just seen a world that maybe will be here in in the in the near future we hope anyway yes it is very energizing to have that feeling of community 
and if you can do it in a safe way where you can socially distance and be outdoors and it's wonderful well especially in florida we have the weather year-round that you can do that but it's it's a it is very energizing and and even though some people come from different places in as far as their their reasons for adopting this lifestyle, whether it might be for compassion for the animals, maybe for the environment, or maybe for their health, but yet they can all congregate in this one area and meet each other and, and share ideas and, and experiences with each other. But basically they all have that same thought process and that same commitment to, to this lifestyle for whatever reason it brings them. And then even when you do people to have people that are adopting this just for health, then there's many different, some people are just doing the starch thing or the low fat thing or the mm -hmm. nutritarian thing. And there's so many different people that are adopting different ways to look at this lifestyle, but yet something happens when they go to an event like yours, right? Oh yeah, for sure. That's, that's what keeps us going. We see it. I mean, we see all kinds of relationships that develop people meet people i've even seen people that you know end up dating or even get married you know they go to our events and you know we have events up and down the east coast and let me also mention that it's not only food products and services meaning like white tent vendors that you'll see at a regular i don't know a fair or a, a, a farmer's market type of an event but you know ours are just no animal products but we also have our big screen our big video wall so we have live in-person presentations by folks at these events and uh you know some of them are online though i'll say like fairfax we are doing fairfax veg fest in partnership with green fair that's actually in 10 days from the time that we are recording this right now it's uh next sunday and we're gonna do that on, on live online only and uh, and there is another thing that we're doing going forward is at least for now we have dr t cole and campbell sign up for our largest event southwest florida veg fest in february he is going to be He's going to be on our giant screen giving a presentation live to a crowd outdoors at our event, which we've never done before. But we're going to use all the technology. All the technology is there. And I also wanted to touch on something you mentioned about different reasons for folks becoming vegan or plant-based. Because our slogan is for people, animals, and our planet. So we recognize all these different reasons as well. We just recognize also that health is the hardest one to attain, right? Optimal human health. Uh, and so that's generally where the focus is in our organization is is on that hardest part, most difficult to attain anyway. I'm glad that it is, because if we really want to mainstream this lifestyle, wouldn't it be best if the people that were adopting it could be people that others could see were obtaining better health and maybe, you know, if they if they're overweight, maybe they lost weight or and and of course it's possible to reverse or either or or lessen symptoms of many lifestyle diseases and if people could adopt this lifestyle in a healthy way which you're advocating and and helping with this could really send a, a strong message out there that this isn't just some kind of a weight loss thing or a tree hugging thing that this is something that could be win 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 right yes. just for the not just for the animals not just for the planet but for our health and i think that that's wonderful that you're showing that this is another way that you, we can look at it yeah yeah and um i also wanted to mention something since you're in florida that you're well aware of the algae blooms and red tide and things that have been happening we also as an organization believe that our message of education is the answer to solving that problem you know because it's really a water runoff problem and of course we all know that animal agriculture one of the biggest problems it has is all the runoff and waste from animals it goes straight into the waterways and it it's loaded with nitrogen and it lights up algae blooms but then you've also got uh, an organic nature we also support that you said veganic which is also a form of being organic it's just a, a vegan form of it and uh, when you have organic landscaping techniques you don't put fertilizers that are chemicals in your lawn they don't run into the water either and then of course amy you know being in florida there's all this there's all this controversy about big sugar back pumping water in the lake okeechobee well granular processed sugar is not part of a whole food plant-based diet so 
people can vote with their dollars and really solve this problem. We believe that. I mean, I, I, I believe this for years. The minute it really cropped up, I think like two and a half years ago, when it got really, really bad. Uh, I, I mentioned this. I don't think many folks believe me, but we were in a different point at that time. And I think going forward, we realize that we need, it's very important that we transmit this to, to folks. Uh, Cause it, it, I don't know if you've ever thought about that being an organic whole food plant-based diet, not just a diet, but a, a diet for your landscaping as well. It's the same in farming techniques. That's the solution to the problem in my, in my opinion. Do you have resources for that as well for people who have uh, weeds and pets trouble that they want to find a better solution other than using the traditional chemicals? Well, we don't. And it was interesting. I saw something on social media just yesterday saying that it was a picture of a really not so great looking lawn. You know, usually if you're talking about the American dream, you're talking about some kind of thick, lush, dark green, turns out non-native, highly toxic, you know, because you've got all these chemicals on it thing. That's the only way to get that. That is the only way to get that. So if your lawn looks not so great, you're probably doing the right thing for the environment because the, the, the organic techniques just are not going to provide that same type of results. They're just not. And it's because it's a non-native species growing somewhere where it would never grow on its own, you know, so. Yeah, that's very true. And, and it seems that there are some people that are finding ways of finding edible things to plant on their, in their landscaping and on their front lawns so that they look pretty, but they're just not traditional. And of course, then they don't have to use these chemicals that are so deleterious to not just our planet, but our health and our, our pets health as well. Yes. Yes. And I've done a video recently. I think it's on our, on our YouTube channel, actually same name as the organization at plantbaseddiet.org where I went to the house of actually it's Gwen who owns green fair organic cafe. She relandscaped her whole yard. She removed all the grass, but and she had a company put in native landscaping and it looks a lot different. It looks nice, but it's not going to, people have to reset their expectations. I think you kind of know as well with the diet, People also have to reset their expectations of the food because we've all been, in a way, just conditioned to have these expectations, which are not what's best for our planet, not what's best for our body. And that's why we, again, view ourselves as, a, as an educational organization. We need to educate folks in this area. And we need as many resources as we can get. And it's nice that you have that website for people to find different information. So if somebody wanted to adopt this lifestyle, maybe they're just happen to be tuning in and thinking about it. What would you say would be a good way for them to go about it? All right. Well, since we are focused on the food and that's the number one biggest reward for the least amount of effort is, uh, you know, you can go to our website. We have, tabs on there where if you like to cook, you can get all these free recipes, which as you know, Amy, they're, they're just pretty, they're all pretty much whole food plant-based. They're just different resources that are on the web. We've, we've combined them all into a tab on our website so you can find them very easily. You can go back hundreds and hundreds of free recipes there. If you like to cook, if you don't like to cook, well, we've also compiled a list of four companies that produce what we consider to be, you know, these healthy vegan food that are, offer you this in a prepared way that usually can be shipped to you if you or if not, you can probably pick it up locally. And that, that's also on our website, Healthy Prepared Food tab. That's wonderful because it seems that people are not in touch with their kitchens as they were uh, generations ago. and Or that just people don't have the time or right. they don't feel confident in trying to cook things that they're not familiar with. So it's nice that you have access to those companies that offer those foods as well and then the recipes if they did want to try it out so since you began this activism i guess you could say right yeah. what, what what is the biggest change that you've seen in me or others or any of that well you just take that as a general question so you can answer it the way you want to say okay well for me i do believe this is a journey for me and i also believe it applies to everyone I don't think that there's anybody out there that knows it all right now, but unfortunately, I think that we're all kind of stuck, society, our culture, and, and I'm talking worldwide just about now, in uh, self-destructive patterns, you know, 
poor choices, poor habits. They've been in, they've been ingrained in us. And so the biggest thing I've noticed is that when I the more I learn about this and the more I change, because it's a force. You have to force yourself. You have to have willpower. You have to have support, community, whatever it takes. You know, that's why we do well. That's why we have these online communities, live events, things like that. Uh, you you become more aware. And, uh, you know, that most folks, there's a word out there, I guess it's called more conscious. You become, you, you wake up, you become conscious of what's actually going on. Because I believe that, you know, at least the way, in the culture that I was raised, we were not, uh, the average person or almost everyone was not raised to think like that. And I think that there's a conscious movement going on and that involves treating animals well, not harming them and also not harming ourselves or doing anything that we know is harmful to ourselves. So it's all part of that journey. And I don't know where it's going to lead me. I don't know where the end point is, if there even is an end point, but we can always do better. Right. And, uh, you know, once you find out how to, how to do better, once you know how to do better, then I think that you should especially if it involves less harm to yourself and others. So I think that I feel better in general. I think all of this, when you, when you recognize that this is a cycle that we were all put into, but we can get out in a way and we can live a better life, you just feel better. And, you know, I'm not a psychologist or anything, but I think that there are mental benefits to knowing that you're doing the right thing. And I think that as more people gain this knowledge and recognize that they are doing the right thing and they are trying to help others. That's the bottom line. We're trying to help everyone, right? Even if I'm at a certain point, there are so many people that are not there yet that I can help. And that's why we, that's what we do in this organization is just help others. And I think that we all know probably also that you really feel your best when you're helping others, not when you're helping yourself. So the more opportunities we have, the more we're just going to work even harder as an organization. And we're, we're thankful for the opportunities and that there is a wave of folks who are interested in this lifestyle now. That's so true. Giving can be such a healing thing to do for some people. They wish that they could give monetary gifts to people and maybe they're not able to, and that's not really the best giving sometimes. Sometimes it's giving up your time or your knowledge or just helping one person and you can have that ripple effect to help yeah. others. And I'm really glad that you brought that up because there's a lot of healing that needs to be done around the world. And the giving part, giving and feeling that you're giving back to your, your earth and giving animals a chance and giving yourself a chance for good health so that you can be more giving to others. It's just a wonderful way to think about those things. And I'm glad that you're part of that. Yeah. And you too, Amy, thank you for your show because your show is another vehicle for getting the word out. You know, I mean, anyone and everyone can do this now. It doesn't matter where you are anymore too. I, I just, I'm so gr thankful to be living in this time where we're all connected, right? It's not, I mean, the only way you can be isolated anymore is if you try. And most people don't want to. I think it's also been shown that it's not a good idea to isolate yourself. So um, anyway, th thank you for, for the work that you're doing, because um, between your work, our work and everyone else's work, we're very hopeful that one day the world will completely wake up. That's that's the ultimate goal. Yes, it certainly is. I'm going to switch gears a little bit here. Before the broadcast, we had a chance to chat a little bit. And you told me about something that I was a little bit aware of, but, but I wanted to get some more information. Seems like that you took some kind of a road trip. So can you tell us about that? Because I thought that sounded so interesting. Sure, of course. Well, uh, I have a, another YouTube channel that's not nonprofit related, although a lot of these videos were on a nonprofit channel because it's all plant-based. Uh, it's called adigitalnomad.net. And we just got the idea, my wife and I, because she is an IT worker. And she's, of course, been affected by COVID-19, has not been allowed to go back to the office. And most people, even if they could go back, are still not going back into an office building. So I figured, well, as long as I could get a good internet connection, we could go and do some traveling. And we hadn't seen most of the national parks, so we just got in our Tesla. I own a Tesla Model X. It's the largest Tesla they make. There's room in, the, in there for her to have an office set up with her laptop and dual screens off the side, just like she would normally work with, the three screen setup. And she would work during the day while I drove. And I, we would drive every day. We had no plan, actually. 
other than we'd be on the road for four months probably. And our food is in the in there. We have a big cooler with our food, mostly organic fruits and vegetables. And we would occasionally eat out as well. Uh, you know, we 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 always got hungry for something that we couldn't make in the car. <laughs> you know, so we did that. <laughs> and, and then when she wasn't working, we'd fold her seat down. There's enough room for a twin air mattress and us to sleep in the car. Although we did rent some Airbnbs and stayed at a few hotels, but and that's all documented because we documented the whole thing through over 500 videos. But most of the time we stayed in the car at night. I know how to lock the car so no one can get in and it's an electric car. So there's no emissions and we can leave the climate control on all night. So when you woke up, you didn't even know where you were. I'd say the biggest struggle was if you had to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, but we were able to work that out most of the time. <laughs> so we could just go on your channel and binge watch your road trip. <laughs> yeah, they're all in order. There's an EP for episode and there's you know one to like 500 i think it's 500 and something on there now and then it also tells you the day day uh and then space and then the three digits so you'll know what day i was on or what day we were on and we're actually even though we stopped officially probably within the last few weeks because uh we're just up north now and we're just i'm, I'm not able to travel as much in the warm months so we're we're still going to take weekend trips and extended weekend trips and we're going to add those to the episodes and just be another day of traveling you know because it's, it's a lot of fun it was i mean we saw so many things because there aren't we kept our distance from people we, we kind of kept to ourselves but i still stayed connected on the internet we still did all types of work i did plenty of work even though when i when i was not driving and uh got to see like i said all the national parks lots of different areas where there just weren't tourists out so we were able to see a lot of things in very short period of time and let me also say in case you couldn't get the gist by me talking that we went we were at a different place every single day we didn't have any plans so literally we just figured where's the weather going to be good tomorrow what haven't we seen and that's what we did <laughs> oh that's wonderful i suppose you must have a pretty solid marriage if you could guys could be <laughs> on the road for that long <laughs> with an air mattress and maybe occasionally an airbnb that's yes. that's a test of a a strong marriage and that I admire that. That's wonderful. Yeah. And actually, so, I'll, yeah, I'll tell you that yeah. I am very thankful again for that experience because it, I am going to really miss if my wife, Denise has to go back to the office, if she has to, then we're hoping that society has changed now for the better because of COVID. We hope that people who are connected by technology are given the freedom to be able to work where they want to be able to work which is the whole point of my di a digital nomad.net channel. Uh, but I work for myself. So that's one thing, but it's another thing if you work for somebody else, right? So we've proven the fact that she's been on the road for four months. And I can tell you that she has won. She always won awards at the office before this journey, but she will tell you, and everyone knows who worked with her, that she's won more awards than ever working from the backseat of the car. <laughs> so well, I think, when you're not in the office you don't have the interruptions of the people who want to chit chat about things or what have you you can just get down to work and probably get a lot more done in a shorter period of time yes and it's a, it's a paradigm shift a lot of people i think there's it's always been a trust issue right well if you're at home you're playing on the lazy boy and you're watching tv all day but if now we've gone through a period of time where people can prove themselves or not depending upon how they handle that so i'm hopeful that going forward uh, people will be a lot more open-minded and uh, consider different options for, for folks that, that it, it meshes with anyway, because I know it doesn't mesh with everybody. Yeah. So you went on this road trip and there are people who have this lifestyle and they want to go on camping or they want to go on a road trip or traveling. So what are your suggestions for bringing uh, food or finding food that will still help them with this lifestyle? All right. Well, I mentioned that I have a cooler and this is a very good question because this was this was a struggle. We would, st you know, I'm a big advocate of organic produce, minimally processed. So we would load this cooler up with with all kinds of organic food, produce. And of course, as you know, Amy, I'm sure when you go out to the store, they don't always have what you want that looks good. That's produce. It's very perishable. You know, and I say to people, you know, the longer the short the shelf life the shorter your life so produce has a very short shelf life but it's gonna it's gonna exponentially lo you know, lengthen your life and the quality of your life so but because of that when we're traveling 
we just really had to settle on whatever was in the store when we showed up because we didn't know these areas. And if something looked good, if they had some raspberries that looked good or some blueberries or some bananas, whatever it might be, you know, they didn't always have something that was close to ripe or in good condition. So we just had to choose what was there. And then going out to eat, that's kind of really what got me going even more, you know, on this uh, healthy vegan food certification is realizing the lack of options for people that are traveling that don't want to, as I mentioned earlier, intentionally hurt themselves. That's the way I would look at it. And it really got, it really got pounded into my head over this trip that I couldn't stop hurting myself at a lot of these places, you know, because there just were no good options. And I didn't want to do that. And I'm a very sensitive person, which is why I was always a picky eater when I was younger. So I could feel it. You know what I'm saying? I could feel, I'm sure you know, if you, you fall off a good patterns, a good habits, you start to feel it quickly. And I was feeling it on, on this trip. So it really gave me motivation to push forward with this. I imagine you may have found some restaurants along the way that you may have given a little lecture to or information to <laughs> as far as what they could do to change their menu. Did you have any Yep. Any restaurants that you could certify or that were interested in? Well, well, we, we I was developing the re, redoing of the certification during this time, but I definitely let people know. And it, and just the fact that we told them that we were traveling, uh, you know, and we've been on the road for like, I tell somebody, oh, we've been on the road for 90 days, you know, and they're like, oh, I want to hear more. So that, of course, we we bring up the lifestyle in these in these discussions. And yeah, I mean, we've we've had good opportunities. Unfortunately, we were only there for one meal because we kept moving on. But maybe they'll see this video, right? And maybe they'll remember me. <laughs> so you never, like you, you mentioned earlier, you never know who you're going to impact. I mean, I think both you and I are similar because we feel so strongly about this. We feel that we need to let people know. They got nothing to lose if they're doing this in the right way. So I've seen it time and time again. You just never know how far reaching it's going to get. And it's it's amazing to see that. That's wonderful. So do you have any plans for international travel and maybe seeing where what parts of the world you can bring this well, to? Believe it or not, we did go travel internationally during this time. And we actually went to Ecuador in mid-January. We had been to Ecuador before. And I can give a little plug there for uh, Terra Frutis and for Fruit Haven, Eco Village. They are two communities in Ecuador that are intentional, uh, basically permaculture, mostly fruitarian communities. And they are trying to live even, I mean, as much as hard as it is in the United States or other countries to live, it's a lot easier if you get um, a group of people that you've met worldwide that intentionally set down and set up a community where you're growing your own food, you know there's no chemicals on it, and you can live as I, I believe probably the, the human body was intended to live. And so we're we're part of that community now. We're we're in the process of of uh, you know purchasing a property over there, and we'll be going back all the time. <laughs> so so that is international travel. Other travel we've done we've done in the past. We were, we were over in Europe before COVID. I don't know if we'll go back. It depends uh, on how international travel opens up because it was difficult to get to Ecuador. I will tell you that, but it is possible. Wow, that's wonderful. I'm just going to have to hopefully one day visit you <laughs> when you're over there. That would be fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to me, like when I see what they're doing in Ecuador at, at Terra Frutis and Fruit Haven Eco Village, it's like, you know, in my mind anyway, it's like, it's like, this is it. Like, if, I think, you know, if Amy, if you were, if you could have your utopia, you know, where you, you don't even need heat or air conditioning there, it's so temperament you know you don't you don't need to water anything because it's raining a lot it doesn't rain all the time but it does rain a lot because it's a rainforest it's just it's awesome you know if this is really important to folks i would highly recommend you at least check it out at some point in time wow, that sounds wonderful well, it looks like we have some questions from our audience so let's see cool. what questions we had Jacqueline. Hi, Jacqueline. Oh, she's excited. I, apparently she's local. So she wants to know when is the Englewood event? Okay. Englewood, we just got confirmation on that. It's the first Saturday in February, which I believe is the fifth. If I don't have a calendar in front of me, but I believe that's what it is. We don't even have an event set up yet. 
this is inside information. <laughs> so you but, heard it here first on Be Green with Amy Live. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's so, wonderful. Yeah. So save the date is what you're saying, and then you'll figure out the rest later. And they can just keep she can keep checking on your website too. Yes. To, see, to get yes. notification. Within and the then you'll tell me about it, and I'll also of post it. Yeah, yeah, and it, it'll be a tab. There is a tab that has our festivals on it. It will appear there within the next couple of weeks. Wow. Anticipation. Andrew T., what brand of cooler are you using on your road trip? Okay, let's hear it. Okay, well, I have an Orca, something I bought back in 2014. There's, It's one of these super thick you know, uh, coolers where you can supposedly leave a bag of ice in there for a week because it's not electric. Although I have an electric car, I probably could use an electric cooler now. But I just we just added ice to it, and we st I still use that method, <laughs> believe it or not. An orca cooler, it's it's probably truly designed for people that would catch fish on the ocean. Okay, even though I we do not in any way uh, think that's okay, but they sure do make some good coolers for people that want to keep vegetables and fruits in there. <laughs> so it's O R C A if you're interested. I'm interested because I travel and even sometimes I just may do a short road trip and I always want to keep things cool. I'm going to uh, be seeing somebody very soon and bringing them some prepared foods. And I always like to know that it's fresh in the, in the car. So I'm going to check that out. All right. Okay, let's see our next question. Gina D, are there any restaurants in Florida that you recommend? Florida, okay. Well. We do most of our most of our presence is in Southwest Florida. That's where we have most of our our relationships with restaurants and in most of our festivals. So we've got folks. Let's see. I'd say we've had really good relationships with Indian restaurants as one category. But there's one that's not an Indian. It's actually a Mediterranean. It's um, I'm sorry. I'm I'm drawing a blank right now. Oh my gosh. We can always it's, check your website too, right? Well, it's it's not on there. Find, it's actually not, not on, on there yet. There. No, okay. it, um, we probably should put it on there. The name is La Miraja. La Miraja okay. in Naples. We do events with them once a month throughout the year that are special. It's not a vegan restaurant, but we have special vegan one, actually two nights only with a special uh, prefix menu. And uh, Tom, the owner there, is a really cool guy. And we've been working together for probably about two years now. And like I said, every month. So if you check our social media, if you get in our vegan swfl.org, that's our local group. If you can't remember that, just go to our website, click on local groups. You'll see the SWFL. You'll, if you become a member, you'll hear about it. And we have an email list you can get on too. That's one That's one that's not an Indian restaurant. For Indian restaurants, we have 21 Spices in Naples. They have an entire menu that we certified, which is which is pretty cool. Uh, it actually has not been upgraded to our new one yet, but it does have no added oil in all the dishes, and they're all plant-based. Then if you go up to um, Spice Club in Fort Myers, we used to do buffets with them all the time. If you look on our YouTube channel, you'll see videos of what they used to look like. They were so mm -hmm. awesome, but we, we can't return to the buffets right now. Right. So, but yeah. they still have a, you know, there, if you actually, the minute you walk up to that restaurant, you will see, you will see this logo behind me. Whoop, or over there. You'll see it on the front door because they're so uh, you know happy to have what they can, you know, what we consider the healthy vegan food at the restaurant. You can still order off their menu. And then there's Flavors of India and Port Charlotte. That's closest to you, I think, Amy. Yes. They, yeah, they are also a partner of ours. We used to do the buffets when we could do the buffets with them. and But they still offer certified healthy vegan food there. So, you know, people, especially if you've got a lot of people that you know, Amy, I think in that area, that's where I would recommend going. I love that you have the logo so that if you entered the restaurant, you could identify it right away and see that and, and know that it was something that going to be there that that would be for you and be very comforted by it let's go with our next question jerry hi jerry what can i buy in the grocery store to make an easy healthy meal in the grocery store okay well if this is this are you in florida by any chance or even east coast of course we know about Publix, right well they carry the plant pure frozen entrees. I'm sure you're probably familiar with them, right, Amy? Yes. Okay. They are actually on our tab for healthy prepared food on our website. 
but uh, they used to sell them online. They don't anymore, but they are at Publix. Almost every Publix should have them. If the Publix in your location doesn't have them, by all means, go ahead and, and just, you might need to visit a few because sometimes I find even if you call, they, they're not necessarily familiar because it's a newer product. But I would highly recommend the plant pure. And then if you go to you know to Whole Foods, there's a couple different options. I think there's an oil-free hummus, by it's made by a Florida company. I can't remember the name of it. Amy, you might know what I'm talking about. It's not salt-free, but it's oil-free. So that is, that's a good thing. Engine 2 used to be at Whole Foods. They may be coming back under the Plant Strong Engine 2 name. So stay tuned for that. But there's not much besides those options that you can actually pick up in the grocery store because the other ones that are prepared on our website are something that gets shipped to you. you know, um, and there are more options that can get shipped to you than there are in the grocery stores. Yeah. And I have a link to a very, I have a series on my YouTube channel called, Hey, I can make that because I'm not the cook in the family. So if I can make it, anybody can make it. And basically it's just probably a recipe that has three or five ingredients that are pretty much familiar ingredients and not things that you've never seen before. And in a very short period of time, without having to worry about burning things or cutting your finger, you could put these assembly these things together and make a meal. And I'll put a link to that also so that you can see a quick and easy dump and mix meal is what I yeah. Yeah. do. <laughs> and, and, and quick and easy is important because I can tell you, we visited our grandkids. Actually, my wife and I have five grandkids all together. We visited. Does he? Hey, guys, does Mike look like he's a grandpa? I don't think so. Yeah, old grandpa like <laughs> yeah, we are. And I actually, I was trying to teach them to eat healthier when we were there. We stayed with them for 12 days, I think, in North Carolina. And when I was there, I just started making pasta sauce because, like I said, Engine 2 is not available at Whole Foods anymore. I used to buy Engine 2 pasta sauce when it was available because it had no added salt, no added oil. And the only thing that's available now at Whole Foods is their house brand that has oil in it. I don't know, actually, it has no oil in it, but it has sodium, lots of sodium, unfortunately, and you mm -hmm. can't take it out. So I decided I was going to make my own. And let me tell you, it does take some time to make some pasta sauce. It was great. It was delicious, but it takes some time. So anything that you have, Amy, that makes it easy. <laughs> I would yeah, definitely that's where you want to start yes yes the less frustration the better mm -hmm. okay eliza hi eliza if i want to recommend a restaurant how can i tell you about them oh that's a good question yes well if you I mean to be certified to get some healthy vegan I think food that's what she means. yeah okay yeah well well you, you can go to our website there's a tab on there for the healthy vegan food at a plant-based diet.org, or you can go to healthyveganfood.info. And if you know the folks at this restaurant, the best thing is if you already have a relationship with them, we just want to build on that. If I walk in, I can probably help for sure. Might even be better if you could just tell them to go to healthyveganfood.info. So, and we pretty much lay out what our program is there, the benefits, and you know, like I said, the low cost, $25 a year for as many entrees as they want to certify. And we'll we'll help them with promoting. That's the bottom line. We want we want to drive people into that restaurant. And I think that anybody who owns a restaurant also knows that plant-based eating is really the only growth center in the restaurant industry right now and has been for some time. So when you combine those two together, I think it's hopefully a no-brainer. They'll be able to also, as a restaurant, do some of the promoting on their own through our own social media. We allow that too if they get our certified uh, you know, designation on at least one item that they have. Very good. Okay, do we have any other questions? Let's see. I think that was it. That may have been the, the last question. Okay, well, very good. Is there anything that you wanted to talk about that we didn't discuss? Let's see. Um, well, we talked about our local communities also on our website. We talked about, I mentioned our YouTube channel a little bit. Um, you know, we have some, we have actually thousands of videos on our YouTube. A lot of that is more documentary type stuff, uh, the meaning like, not in a studio. <laughs> I'm famous for that, going into different restaurants and recording and making videos of those restaurants on our YouTube channel, just to show people that they have plant-based options. Um, let's see, what else? Our certification, of course, is, is important. Our live events are important. And another thing that we didn't talk about for live events, we talked about our, our festival events, which are awesome. They're large events. And as you mentioned, Amy, just getting around people that are like-minded you know i also want to mention too that i feel that especially going back to these events after covid that there is an energy i think i think a lot of people do believe that everything's energy 
And there's a certain energy when you are there at a live event with actual people. You know, you don't even have to be any closer than six feet, but just being near people, you know, it provides a certain energy, an experience you can't get through the computer necessarily. Although the computers and the internet is an awesome tool, it doesn't necessarily provide the equivalent and it may never. So before we could even do our festivals, which we started back in January, you know, like I mentioned, the three we did in Florida, we did smaller events that limited, there were ticketed events on the farm. We went to different farms in DC area, in North Carolina and in Florida. And we did what we call plants to table. It was called plants to table dinner on the farm. So I didn't mention that, but we did those because that was the only thing we could do at the time, right? We did all three of those in the fall, DC, North Carolina, and Southwest Florida. And they were all successful. And actually, if you go to our YouTube channel, you can see some videos of what those events look like. They're much, much different than our festival events, but they were really cool experiences. And we we hope to have those again. We've already got two of the three on the books for happening this fall. So that's another thing that people can get involved in uh, that I didn't mention earlier. Well, that's exciting. So we could just get our calendar out, go to your website and, and save the date for all these different events because we just need a tribe. If we yeah. have a tribe, <laughs> it's so much easier, isn't it? Yes, yeah. You need the, the camaraderie, right? I mean, just the support because I don't know about you guys, but I, I well, I think no one's immune. You, you're affected by the people you hang out with, right? You've heard the, the saying, you become like the five people you spend the most time with. And in today's age, that's not necessarily in person. It could be online. And whether you like it or not, you're going to end up like them. So it's important to have a good tribe of people that are influencing you and and just promoting what you do. You know, I mean, just telling you that you're doing the right thing, because a lot of times you don't hear that, unfortunately. Right. We're bombarded with commercials and social media and so forth. And it's and it's very easy to get sidetracked for some people that especially if they uh, don't have maybe a supporting family or a supporting uh, partner yeah. it can be sometimes isolating so it's nice to have that tribe and having it at these festivals and also having it on on your website where you give them places to meet with people on social media if they can't if they're not close enough to where your festivals are and that's that's so important yeah. Yeah. We've, we've, I mean, it's turned into way more than I ever thought. When I first started, I figured, I think I had a group in Southwest Florida and a group in Raleigh, North Carolina, and that's it. And then we decided we're going to do one festival and then everything has just grown since then. And this is since, since 2014, 2015 timeframe. That's when we really got the, the wheels moving on those. So it's easier than ever. Anybody who's out there watching this, who wants to make a positive change, because I can assure you that the only when you hear stuff talked about by our nonprofit, it's only because we know that this is the right thing to do. And it's not just our word. It's the word of many, many others that have done all kinds of studies, uh, you know, and all, all kinds of scientific and evidence based work to, to show that this is the right thing to do. So if you are out there and you're not yet on that path and you want to, by all means, please get plugged into our communities. We even have a worldwide group too, outside of the, the ones that are local, but the local ones will help you the, the most. So hopefully if you're watching, like I said, Florida is a huge area for us, right? So anybody who's watching from Florida, we cover most of the state. That's a big state. <laughs> that's, yeah. a lot, that's a lot to say if you cover most of the state, that's, the, that's yeah. wonderful. We are so fortunate to have people like you out there that have the energy and the knowledge and really are making such a big difference in what we're doing as far as this movement and with this lifestyle. And it's more challenging for people to find the healthy options yeah. that they want to live with. And you make it so much easier. And I, I bet that you have so many other things in your mind for down the road that you're <laughs> going to be adding. And we're really excited about that. I, I just really wanted to thank you so much, Mike, for being a part of this broadcast. I know you're always busy planning events and, and running your nonprofit and so forth, but taking the time to give this information to the viewers and putting it out there, it's so important. And I'm really so grateful that you were here today. All right, thank you. And, and same right back at you, Amy. I mean, just keep up the great work. Eventually, what you and I, I think, know is the right and best way to live without harming 
others and ourselves it will be the norm someday. Right. So I just wanted to tell everybody that we have uh, a next guest coming up and Jess Tassett Voice is going to tell us who is our next guest. Coming up next on Be Green with Amy Live, a Q&A with Robert Cheek, the godfather of vegan bodybuilding. Monday, April 12th at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern on Be Green with Amy Live. Yeah, I hope you guys can join us for that. And we'll be talking to Robert about Mike because I think they have a lot of things in common. And I want to thank again, Mike, for you being here. And I also have somebody in the background that I'd like to thank, and that is Rebecca from PKA Solves. She's been our engineer, and she's been pushing all the buttons and clicking things so that I could just relax and enjoy my time with Mike and all of you without having to worry about what to do. So thank you so much, Rebecca. And I also wanted to thank Jess Toss from Jess Toss Voice. She did our promos and our countdown, and it was wonderful. And she adds such a nice dimension to our broadcast. But most of all, I want to thank all of you guys. I want to thank you for being here. Because if you weren't here, we wouldn't be. We're here because of you. And you're going to help by clicking like or commenting or subscribing, sharing. This is what we need. Mike needs you, and I need you, and all the people out there who have health issues that are looking for answers or people that want to help with the environment or with the animals. We need you to spread this word. So thank you so much for joining us. And until we see you again, be strong, be well, and be green. <laughs>